Right, he's a great musician, too. Good musician, good musician. Really All is. right, my first guest, terrific comedian. Emmy-winning show, Dennis Miller Live, starts its new season tomorrow night on HBO. Please welcome the one, the only, Dennis Miller! That's very nice of you to mention tomorrow night, since we I, I go on 11.30. You can tape one, watch the other. This is, we live in an age of thousands of channels. You've become very magnanimous as you've become powerful. I yeah, and I'm going to look that, that word up as soon as this show is <laughs> over. Hey, thanks for having me on tonight, but I noticed things at NBC not quite like they used to be. No, I asked no. for a hotel room tonight, and I could tell Seinfeld's no longer on Thursday nights. Yeah, yeah. Staying in a refrigerator box on La Cienega. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's a lot of cutbacks. Yeah, a lot of cutbacks. Cut cut Actually, they have me over here at the Marriott, and I'm wondering if the powers that be at the Marriott could make the metal clasp on the jelly bean jar in my mini bar a little more difficult to operate. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. thing's harder to get off than Martha Stewart on a set of dirty sheets. <laughs> Martha Stewart on a set of dirty sheets. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you throw it out there, you see what flies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you look rested, you look comfortable. How are the holidays? Great Good. holidays. Yeah. Went skiing, my new you, hobby. You skiing? I'm trying it. Really? Not very good at it yet. I ski like a 45-year-old breadwinner. I, uh... <laughs> Look down the mountain, I don't see a rewarding series of challenges, but rather a sterling opportunity for a radical decline in my wage earning ability. I, uh, always you don't a little trepidatious you about You don't it. seem like a skier. Now, yeah. I've never even known you to go outside. Well, <laughs> no, I, I never said I skied outside, Jay. Right. And you get out of a cab like this. <laughs> not, I didn't know. I can't imagine you with fresh hey, air. Hey, 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 now really? you can tease me. <laughs> But I got a Christmas present that you're never going to believe. I, now, my hobby, and this is an odd enough hobby, yeah. but I'll cop to it on national television, I collect old, bad science fiction films. I don't like good ones. No, I like the, really, the bad ones are the really crappy ones. That, yeah. well, the kind they show on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yeah, those are great. Those and, are great. Uh, yeah, very good show. I picked up a little gem from the early 60s called uh, Revenge of the Sun Demon. No, Hideous Sun Demon. Hideous Sun Demon. Hideous. Oh, that's, yes, and, yes. And, it's, <laughs> and the voiceover is done by you. Unbelievable. Hey, 2,500 bucks in 1983 was pretty damn good. 2,500 bucks? Yeah, so I got, I had to, now, they, they rewrote How did this. they approach you? Where did they come to you at? The, to in do an alley. the voiceover for in the sun alley. Demon. And Jay makes the sun demon really horny. It's funny. Like, <laughs> the sun demon, he's all mutated and screwed up, but he's hitting on women all the time. You know? No, this was a monster movie. I guess it didn't do very well. So somebody figured... Maybe they'll put a, they wrote what they thought, I guess, was a funny track to go along with it. So they asked me to come in. They'd see me at one of the clubs, and would you come in and read this? And I said, sure. So, so it was Mystery Science Theater yeah, before just, Mystery Science I Theater ever happened. I all my rights away, and hey. But I mean, I'm sitting at home, and I'm watching it. I feel weird that I'm watching it to begin with. And I go, is, is that Leno, or am I hallucinating here? I mean, <laughs> it's you being horny with these women. You're laying there, you're a big scab in a bed hitting on this woman. <laughs> well, it, it is autobiographical, I'll admit. <laughs> Now, did you ever see, I'm sure you have Plan 9. That, I guess, is the... Oh, is we that used the, to watch Plan 9 at your house. Every Ed night. Wood's film, Plan 9 from oh. Outer Space. Jay used to do his doctoral thesis work on oh, that. He'd have right. us up. And I remember you actually had a pointer, and you'd stop the film. That's and right. That's right. You'd point out <laughs> things like, on the inside of the spaceship wall, they had an Earth calendar. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> Hanging on the inside of the wall. 1958, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you do when you're not working. Night. Seinfeld, Jay, oh, I, yeah. and, uh, Billy Maher, Jimmy Brogan. We used we, to go up Jay's house and go Jay would deliver this doctoral thesis on Plan 9 from Outer Space. <laughs> now, let's review 1998. Uh, big year. Big, big year. Big, big year. year in entertainment. Yeah. We had the Chips reunion. <laughs> Yeah. Larry Wilcox and Eric Estrada reprising their roles as Ponch and John. Can you believe they were both available? <laughs> <laughs> then we have the Spice Girls, the decimation Spice of the Spice Girls. It's tough to watch. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. How do you go on? I don't know. <laughs> it's like Everest. Put one foot in front of the other, you keep moving. Uh, 
<laughs> Ginger Spice says yeah. she wants to pursue a solo career. You know, honey, if you're watching, you have no idea how absolutely solo that career is about to get, Ooh. okay? Ooh. Now we have the, uh, the Stones touring in Russia. Yeah, Stones. See Keith Richards? Huh? Keith looks good, doesn't he? <laughs> this guy's not even a human being anymore. He's like, he's like an old wallet that mumbles or something, you know? And then we had the Jerry Springer Show rises to number, number one yeah. in daytime syndicated writing. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, they love it. It's unbelievable to me. I, uh, I think Springer augurs for the end of the planet. That's not to say that I don't find it intellectually stimulating. Indeed, how many times have I been walking through the parking lot of a laundromat and saw two fat white chicks slap fighting and thought, wow, I wonder what the backstory is on that. But, uh... <laughs> and we, on your network, we yeah. have Dateline. It's Dayton. gone to four nights, five nights? Now what is it? Nine nights. It's on Nine twice a day. <laughs> you know, the only thing stiffer than Stone Phillips is Richard Simmons watching him. TV show of the year, though, is the yeah. uh, the Iraq bombings. I mean, what is what is Saddam Hussein thinking? This guy is like Wally Coyote in a red beret. You know, that... last time I saw a battle plan like that, I was playing Stratego with the Lander sisters. Okay, <laughs> the Lander sisters. The Lander sisters. Ah, just... Judy, Audrey, if you're watching, I kid, but I love. <laughs> well, you know what the big story was. Obviously, you've been talking about yeah. it all the time. Uh, yeah. The president of the United States uh, under trial for impeachment today. And I don't know what has brought us to this point. Uh, I'm not a fan of Bill Clinton, but I don't know if he deserves to be raked over the coals like this. I think it's kind of like boredom. You know, we get up, we don't know what to do with our life. We think, well, what the hell, we'll cannibalize the president, for God's sake. You know, because I don't know exactly. I don't think he's a good guy, but uh, if you look at Clinton, it's not the worst malfeasance that a man has ever committed. You know, Clinton, uh, to give you an idea where Clinton's at in this whole thing, it's uh, Clinton's sort of like the parent who has to tell his kid he never smoked pot, you know? We're all in that sort of position where you, you don't want to tell the truth about it, but you, you, you end up fudging the truth a little and you get in trouble about it. But I don't think he's the worst person in the world. I, I feel badly for Hillary. Hillary hears the words, I'm sorry, more frequently than Polly Shore on Celebrity Jeopardy. And, uh, <laughs> and to, watch, to watch this man dragged in front of the Senate today you know, like I said, I'm not a fan, but when I see it come to this, it feels, it makes oh, me yeah, a little queasy, queasy to watch Strom Thurmond up there <laughs> making a decision on this. Strom Thurmond, for God's sakes. This guy's urethra makes the 405 during rush hour look like Splash Mountain, okay? <laughs> what the hell is he doing judging anybody? Who knows what the urethra is? I'm curious. <laughs> People are explaining it. Urethra is that thing that hangs oh. from your mouth. Like it's, uh, I'm thinking it was at the other end. Maybe no, I'm that's the uvula. Oh, sorry, uvula. I'm sorry. Right. Of course. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> you know who I don't like more than Clinton is Carville. Carville, you don't I mean, like... have you seen Carville lately? Is he not clinically insane? I saw him <laughs> on Larry King the other night. This guy is like some demented lapdog that Clinton <laughs> sicks on these women. He's a snake oil salesman who actually looks like a snake. I can't even watch him anymore. He's got more nervous tics than a Belfast parking valet. And, uh, you know, it's just... <laughs> Belfast parking, parking valet. But I'll tell you... <laughs> Belfast parking uh... valet. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yep. Here's what Clinton's got to do. I yeah. mean, really, I'm not trying to... Bill, I don't know if you're watching this, if you're too busy, I but if you is. are... <laughs> you got one... Well, that's what I like about him. People like us tease him, and he seems to like you, doesn't he? I mean, Actually, usually... I, I write jokes in case you yeah, put the white so you got to give the I'm guy... I haven't that's, been audited. That's one of the things I like about the guy, is he yeah. takes it with a, a, you know, a good sense of humor. But I think he's only got one chance. I, I think that... Uh, I think that he's got to come on TV sometime yeah. this week. He's got to look America right in the eye, and he's got to say, listen, and listen good, because this is the last time we go over this turf. I am the horniest guy on the planet, okay? I hit everything that moves, all right? 
I've got a tough job. I've got to go over to China and pretend I like these guys after they run over students with tanks. I have got a brutal job. And as a compensatory gesture, the little head of state is constantly looking for Oval Office space. All right? I want you to go home tonight. I want you to look at your bank accounts. I want you to look at the computer terminals in your kid's school. I want you to look at the stock market. I want you to look at uninflation. I want you to look at crime in the street. And I want you to come back in here tomorrow morning. And if you tell me you want me to leave, I'll walk out that door. You'll never hear another word from me. I don't know about you, Jay. I'm sitting at home watching that. I'm thinking, well, we got to get this son of a bitch a third term, don't we? <laughs> That's what Bill Clinton has to do. <laughs> there you it. go, folks, right from the horse's mouth. Dennis, thank you very much.